derive and apply compound angles. So when we're talking about compound angles, we're talking about the addition or subtraction of an angle and wrapping that additional subtraction of an angle inside a sine, cos or tan function. But in order to do this, we first need to look at we first need to look at the unit circle. So let's go ahead and draw one up. And let's draw our xy axis in. And let's mark in a point here. Let's call it Q and draw a line there. And let's call the angle that it makes with the positive x axis alpha. Let's draw in another point, P, and connect the line to it. And let's say that the angle that goes from the positive x-axis to that point is theta. Which means that the angle in between P and Q in here has to be theta minus alpha. Let's also take a look at this right angle triangle here. We drop that perpendicular and let's just draw it over here just so we can gather some information about it. So if we let this side be x and this side be y, we know the hypotenuse is 1 because it's a unit circle, it's just the radius of the unit circle. And we can write expressions for cos alpha being the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So we get x equals cos alpha. And we can write expression for sine alpha being the opposite over the hypotenuse, so y must equal sine alpha. And that's what the coordinates of the point Q are. They're just the xy coordinates. So x is cos alpha and y is sine alpha. We can do the same thing for P and we'd get the x coordinate being cos theta and the y coordinate being sine theta. Now we're going to look at writing some expressions for the distance of PQ. So if we connect P and Q together, we can use a distance formula saying that PQ squared will equal X2 minus X1 all squared. So we get, we're gonna get cos theta minus cos alpha all squared plus sine theta minus sine alpha all squared. Let's expand this out. So we'll square our first term, cos squared theta minus double the product. So we'll get two cos theta cos alpha plus the last term squared, which will be cos, alpha, cos squared alpha plus do our next bracket. So we're gonna get sine squared theta minus 2 sine theta sine alpha plus our last term squared which is going to be sine squared alpha. We can tidy this up a little bit because we know cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. We know that cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha also equals 1. So that 1 plus 1. And then we're going to have minus 2 cos theta cos alpha minus 2 sine theta sine alpha. So let's tie this up a little bit. 1 plus 1 is 2. And we can factorize out a negative 2 here. So we'll get cos theta, 
cos alpha plus sine theta sine alpha. We can also write another expression for PQ. So this is what PQ squared equals. And we can write another expression for PQ squared using the cosine rule. So we're going to have PQ squared is actually going to equal, if we call the origin O, it's going to equal OQ squared, which is just one squared because it's a radius of a circle, plus OP squared, which is another radius of a circle, minus two times those two sides multiplied together, times cos of the angle at the center of this triangle. And we know this angle at the center is theta minus alpha. So it's going to be cos of theta minus alpha. So we get PQ, PQ squared equals 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is 2, minus 2 times 1 times 1 is just 2, times cos of theta minus alpha. And now we can just go ahead and equate those expressions of PQ squared. So this one here and this one being the second one, because they're both equal PQ squared. So then we're going to get 2 minus 2 cos theta minus alpha equals 2 minus 2 outside of cos theta cos alpha plus sine theta sine alpha. That's minus 2 from both sides, so they cancel out. Then divide both sides by negative 2, so they'll cancel out. And we finally get an expression cos theta minus cos alpha equals cos theta cos alpha plus sine theta sine alpha. And this is our first result for our compound angle. So we finally have an expression for the difference of two angles and taking the cosine of that angle. And it equals, it equals this expression here. But we need to get five more of them. So to get our next one, let's go to a new thing. So let's just write that one out again. We had cos of theta minus alpha equaling cos theta cos alpha plus sine theta sine alpha. So we're going to go ahead and let alpha equal minus alpha, and that's going to give us our expression for cos of the theta plus alpha, because we're going to get theta, we're going to get cos of theta minus minus alpha equaling cos theta, cos of minus alpha plus sine theta, sine of minus alpha. So this is going to give us cos theta minus minus alpha is theta plus alpha. Now, the cos of minus alpha just actually equals cos alpha. And you can think about your all stations to central. So taking the cos of a negative alpha, uh, the cos is going to be positive there. So we're going to get just cos alpha here. And we're going to go sine theta. Now sine of minus alpha, that's going to be negative because only cos is positive when we have a negative acute angle. So we're going to go minus sine alpha. And that's because sine of minus alpha equals minus sine alpha. And there's our next expression. And this one gives us when we have the addition of two angles. Now let's go ahead and get some expressions for sine. And we're going to do that by just letting theta this time, we're going to let theta equal 90 minus theta. So we're going to get cos, we're going to let theta equal 90 minus theta, we're going to have plus alpha of cos or theta this time, is 90 minus theta, so we get 90 minus theta cos alpha 
minus sine of theta, which is 90 minus theta, times sine alpha. Now on the left-hand side, we can rewrite this as 90 minus, open bracket, theta minus alpha. If you expand that out, it should be the same thing. So minus alpha is there, and minus minus alpha gives us plus alpha. And that's going to equal, well, cos of 90 minus theta, cos sine and cos are complementary, that just equals sine theta. So we get sine theta, cos alpha, minus... Now the sine of 90 minus theta, again, because sine and cos are complementary, that just equals cos theta. Sine alpha. And again, because sine and cos are complementary, cos of 90 minus some angle is just going to be sine of that angle. So we're going to get sine of theta minus alpha equaling sine theta cos alpha minus cos alpha sine cos theta sine alpha. And that's our third expression. And we can get our last one for sine. Again, if we just let alpha equal minus alpha, so we're going to get sine of theta minus minus alpha, it's going to equal sine theta cos of minus alpha minus cos theta sine of minus alpha. So then we're going to get sine of theta minus minus alpha is theta plus alpha. Cos of minus alpha, that's just going to give us cos alpha. And over here, sine of minus alpha is the same as minus sine alpha, so that minus comes out here and makes that a plus. So we get plus of cos theta sine alpha. And that's our second expression for sine, taking the addition of two angles. So let's go ahead and do tan now. So if we want an expression for tan of theta plus alpha, we could actually use the expressions we already have for sine and cos, because we know tan is equal to sine over cos. So this is going to be equal to the expression of sine theta plus alpha over the expression of cos theta plus alpha, which we've already found. So this is going to be the same as sine theta cos alpha plus cos theta sine alpha all over cos theta cos alpha minus sine theta sine alpha. And it'd be nice if it was all in terms of tan. And the way we're going to do that is that if we can get this over cos and this over cos, we can express these in terms of tan. And the way to do the way to well, all our signs, we, we need to divide by cos. And if we divide all the coses by cos, we get expressions of one. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by one, obviously, but the one we're going to choose is one over cos theta, cos alpha, over one over cos theta, cos alpha. Might be, might say might, might not make any sense, but let's let's see how we go. So expanding this out, so first we're going to go this term multiplied by this term. So the sine theta with this cos theta will turn into a tan theta. Then the cos alpha over this cos alpha will just be 1. So that term, so that all simplifies to just tan theta. Now plus cos theta over cos theta is 1, and sine alpha over cos alpha is just tan alpha. So that's the numerators just turned into tan theta plus tan alpha. Then 
cos theta cos alpha over cos theta cos alpha all turns into 1. So you actually just get 1 there. Minus sine alpha over cos alpha. So sine theta over cos theta is tan theta. And then sine alpha over cos alpha is tan alpha. And this is our expression for the tan of theta plus alpha. And finally, to get our last one, we're just going to again let alpha equal minus alpha. So we're going to get tan of theta plus minus alpha will just be of tan theta minus alpha. We're going to get tan theta plus tan of minus alpha over 1 minus tan theta tan minus alpha. We can simplify this. Say tan of theta minus alpha is going to equal to tan theta. Now tan of minus alpha equals minus tan alpha. So we're just going to get minus tan alpha over 1. Now the minus minus will turn into a plus. So we get 1 plus tan theta tan alpha for our last expression for our compound angle results. Let's look at one example. So we wanted to find the exact value of sine 75. What's the exact value of that? Well, we can use these compound angles to write this in terms of two angles we know the exact value of. And one way to do that would be to write it as sine 45 plus 30, as 45 plus 30 is 75. And using our compound angle result with the addition of sine angles, we're going to get sine 30 times cos 45 plus cos 30 times sine 45 for our expansion. And we know the exact value of all of these. So sine 30 is just a half. Cos 45 is 1 on root 2 plus cos 30, which is root 3 on 2, times sine 45, which is 1 on root 2. We can tidy this up. We're going to get 1 over 2 root 2 plus root 3 over 2 root 2. So they have the same denominator, so we can just add the numerator. So we get 1 plus root 3 over 2 root 2. And we'll just rationalize this denominator. So we'll times by root 2 on root 2. So we get root 2 plus root 6 over 4 for our final answer. Mm -hmm.